we're going to move into some asana practice, some yoga practice on the mat. And this will be a nice balanced practice so that you feel refreshed and energized and eased out and also peaceful by the end of the session. Coming up after child's pose, now we're coming forward onto our belly, sliding the arms forward, drawing in the lower belly and let's inhale and lift one arm and the opposite leg and exhale gently lower. Change, inhale, lift, exhale, lower. Inhale, lift, exhale, lower. Inhale, lift, exhale, lower. We'll hold the next one. So let's inhale, lift, and just hold it here, breathing. So those back muscles are working strongly. Glutes, hamstrings. Great for strengthening the back and gently lower, changing sides. Inhale, lift and hold, breathing here. And gently lower. We're going to bend up one leg, reach back. If you can, not everyone can, but if you can reach the front of your ankle, you do. Draw the belly in, a little bit of protection again for that lumbar spine. And let's inhale and lift up and back into the half bow. You can press a little bit further with that front hand if it suits. The back foot lifts up and back. If you're feeling strong, you can lift that front arm. Breathing here. And gently lower and changing sides, reaching back with the other hand, taking hold of that foot, inhale, lifting up and back, a little bit of an extra press with that front hand if you wish. You can stay here or if you feel steady, taking that front arm off the floor, breathing here. And gently lower. And coming into the sphinx. Just lining your elbows up directly under your shoulders. Forearms are parallel. Pressing the top of the feet down into the floor. There's a sense of the chest coming forward, the crown of the head lifting up. Shoulders dropping. This beautiful, safe, very accessible back bend, the Sphinx. Nice healthy movement for the back. Really nice way to counter our everyday hunching forward. And then slowly releasing down. Choosing now, you can repeat the Sphinx, that's great. Or bending up both legs for anyone who wants to, taking hold of both feet squeezing the shoulder blades together. Inhale and lift up and back into the bow. Dhanurasana bow pose. Breathing here. You might find there's a slight rocking that happens as you breathe. And then slowly release, release the legs. Release the arms, just resting the head however's comfortable. And then once again, pressing back into child's pose. Feeling the back muscles ease out. Might be more comfortable to place one fist on top of the other and rest your head there. Or let the arms rest beside you and lower your head all the way down. Slowly curling yourself up. 
sliding off your heels and taking the legs out in front. Now we're going to move into a twist. So bending up your right leg and taking it over to the outside of your left leg. You want to keep your spine nice and straight and tall. Some people find it easier to sit on a cushion or something to just raise the hips a little bit. You can keep your left leg out straight or if it suits you, tuck it around but make sure you keep your right buttock down on the floor. So sitting up nice and straight, we'll take the left arm and wrap it around that right thigh. Take the right arm around behind, plant the hand to the floor and gently twist. So working on creating length in the spine, that's the central axis around which you're twisting and just deepening into the twist, lengthening and twisting. You may prefer a different hand position, you can take your back hand around behind your waist, maybe even bind the hands, but really the focus is on whatever gives you the best Movement into the twist. Using your breath to just deepen, lengthening as you breathe in, gently twisting as you breathe out. And then gently turning your head back to centre, arms and torso back to centre. Changing legs, straightening out the right leg, taking the left one over the top. It's fine to stay with that. Or tucking the left, the right leg around. Sitting up nice and straight and tall. Inhale, right hand comes out. Exhale, wrap it around. Inhale, left arm out. Exhale, sweep it around. Plant the hand and twist. Just working to your own capacity lengthening and twisting breathing in lengthening breathing out exploring the twist feeling the pressure over the belly the twist in the back muscles And then gently bringing your gaze back to centre, arms and torso to centre. You may like to just press down with your hands and give yourself a little lift up. And then release, bend the legs in front and just round forward over the legs. Feeling the back just ease out from any tension in the muscles from the twist. Curling yourself up and we're coming into a forward bend. So we're going to bend up one leg and just place the foot against the inside of your opposite thigh. Facing the straight leg, let's inhale. As you exhale, just gently folding forward over the leg and just working with creating length as you breathe in Softening forward as you breathe out. Lengthening and softening. Lengthening and softening. Feeling the resistance, maybe in your calf muscles, your hamstrings, your glutes. As well as having strong muscles, it's also really healthy to have muscles that can stretch to support mobility, agility. And then releasing, walking your hands back, coming into upright. And then we'll change sides, so straightening out the bent leg, bending up the straight one. Sometimes you might need props, so you may prefer to have something under that bent leg. You may prefer to raise your hips a little bit as we did before. And then let's inhale and exhale, folding down over the straight leg. 
Breathing in to create some length, breathing out, folding forward. So just little by little, easing your way down into Janusa Shasana. Seated forward bend with one leg. Breathing and just softening. Trying to keep your back fairly straight so as not to put undue load onto the lumbar spine. And then releasing, walking the hands back. And we'll finish this little forward bending sequence with Pashimottanasan, our intense forward bend or west side stretch. Some people are better off keeping the legs a little bit bent, so that may suit you better, or you can have them out straight and let's inhale and exhale and gently folding forward. And again, you just take hold of wherever you happen to reach. It might be your calves or your ankles or your feet. And just work on lengthening as you breathe in, softening forward as you breathe out, allowing the belly to just move somewhere towards the thighs, chest somewhere towards the knees. Lastly, allowing the head to drop if that feels comfortable for you. Of course, it doesn't matter how far forward you get. As I said earlier, sometimes you don't have to go very far at all and that's where you feel the stretch. So wherever you get to is just fine. And we'll slowly release, walking the hands back, coming back into upright, and then easing into a counter pose, bending up your legs, placing your hands behind you, Gently arching back, lifting your sternum, your breastbone up, gazing up. You can stay with that or if it all feels fine, just float the hips up, lifting them up towards the ceiling, keeping the neck nice and long and just gazing up at the ceiling. And then gently release, slowly coming down. And to finish off our practice, we're moving into an inversion before we meditate. So now we're going to move over to the wall for an inversion. So sidling your hip right up to the wall, swinging your legs up the wall. You may like to slide a folded blanket or a bolster underneath you, or you may prefer to just keep your bottom right down on the floor and just resting here. You also may prefer to have something under your head, but you're getting the beautiful benefit of being upside down just with the legs up the wall. You may like to bend your legs, press with your feet, push up into a supported shoulder stand, not if you've got high blood pressure, and just spend a few moments breathing here, but otherwise just Staying with your legs up the wall and just breathing here. Soaking in the beautiful benefits of this nice, easy, restorative inversion. Viparita Karani, beautiful practice. Beautiful practice to balance out the busyness of anyone's day, beautiful restorative practice to support well-being, supporting the circulatory and lymphatic systems, helping them with their return flow back to the heart. And you might feel yourself here moving towards meditation.
And when you're ready to meditate, just drawing your knees into your chest. Gently resting on your side for a moment. So don't pop up too quickly. And then coming up for meditation. You may like to sit on a cushion or a bolster. Just whatever's best for you. You want your spine to be upright. You may want to cover yourself up. You may like to bring your hands into a mudra, maybe one on top of the other, or perhaps on your thighs. Let your shoulders drop, let the eyes close. When we move into meditation, we move away from the mind, the busy mind part of our inner space. We drop away from that and move into quiet awareness. It might feel as though there is a big pool of quiet already in there. But just quietly watch your own inner landscape. Dropping away from thinking. Quietly watching, just be. And when you're ready, gently blink your eyes open. Just noticing how your body feels after your practice. Noticing if your mind was busy in that few moments of stillness or whether it was quiet or a bit of both. And we'll finish our practice with three big energizing breaths. So let's inhale and exhale. Inhale and exhale. And last one. And thank you everyone. We honor each other by saying Namaste. Hope you feel great after your practice. Thank you.